Shalom everyone and welcome to this remarkable event of our crowd in the startup nation. This fellow over there, John Medved, he did lots of good stuff. Uh, I'll mention three of them, Shalom Yaron. He did three good things. One of them he founded our crowd. The second, his father to the most amazing singer, Nina. And the third, he's a remarkable seed investor in a guy called Naftali Bennett. 19 years ago, I walked into his office. He was then a VC, Israel Seed Partners. He was nice then and he's still nice today. And in fact, he invested in Sayoda, my company. So thanks. I wouldn't be here without you. So we're going to be talking about predictions. I've got no idea what's going to happen. But what do you do when you have no idea what's going to happen? What other environment is profoundly covered with uncertainty? You know where? Waging war. I'll tell you a story. Before the second Lebanon war, uh, when we were ramping up and getting ready, I was uh, a commander of a search and destroy mission in uh, Lebanon. So we were about to go in, and what happened was the following. Every two hours, we got a new mission. Our commanders gave us a new mission, a different location, a different task. So every two hours, we dumped the previous mission and we started preparing and learning the maps and all of that. And then two hours later, we threw it away. After about two days of this, I said, you know what? I've got an idea. I'm not going to prepare for missions anymore. I'm going to go train. I'm going to go get the best people. Because whatever the mission is, it's going to change a thousand times. But there's one constant. The better we are as a team, the better we'll perform in any uncertainty that will be hurled our way. What applied then applies also to the state of Israel and, in fact, to everyone in this world. Because, you know, I'm, I'm reading all the same predictions of uh, chips going to be uh, planted in our brains and connected to the cloud and then hacked by someone. I don't know. But I'm Minister of Education, and within this lack of knowledge, I'm not a commentator, I have to act. And the question is, what do I do as the guy responsible for the future of the state of Israel, for the kids who tomorrow are going to be soldiers and the day after going to be in high tech and in Israel's economy, what do I do today to prepare them to such an unknown future? There's three secrets, in my opinion, to the startup nation. First of all, it's the culture, the profound culture of debate. In Israel, you're considered impolite if you don't argue. I, I remember when I founded my startup, there were a few really nice Americans. They didn't understand. They actually thought that you have to wait for the other guy to finish a sentence before reacting. They didn't get it. Generally, Israel has a unique physics. Have you ever been to an Israeli elevator? Only in the Holy Land, you can enter the elevator before people come out. And there's a miracle. But Israel, there's a culture of debate, and it's based on about 2,000 years of Torah studies. If we take, get in a car, drive five minutes away here to a yeshiva called Hebron Yeshiva, you come into a, a building about the size of this room, about 1,000 yeshiva students, you open the door and there's this really loud noise of yelling. So it's not like a library in some university where you have to tiptoe. The Jewish culture is one it's called chevruta, where you split into uh, uh, two people at a time and you debate. 
And you know what? The bottom line almost doesn't matter. It's all about the debate. He says this, I say that, and then he says this. And the same culture applied in my startup and in Ministry of Education. And guess what? In government also, we debate. And that's beautiful because debate creates innovation. However, innovation is important. I think more important than innovation is entrepreneurship. Let's just define it. Innovation is coming up with a novel idea. Entrepreneurship is making it happen. Lots of people have good ideas. Lots of people are those people who thought of the and never did it. And the big difference is acting. And that's what we have to teach. So the first component is the culture of debate. The second component is what I call a shadow education system in Israel. Beyond the schools where we teach math and physics and you name it, we have an informal education system in Israel, which is unique. I'm talking about a plethora of youth movements, of preparations for the army, of volunteership. And what's unique in Israel is that kids instruct kids, as opposed to adults instructing kids. I was a Cub Scout in New Jersey, so it was a 40-year-old guy, or, you know, when you're in first grade, an 18-year-old guy looks like 70, so I don't know how old he was, but an adult, and he instructed us. In Israel, I was in a youth movement. When I was 14 or 15 years old, and this is very common, I find myself taking 60 kids that are in fifth grade on a two-day hike in the mountains in the Galilee. How irresponsible can you be? <laughs> but that's the way Israel works. Right now as we speak, the scouts, the Shomer HaTzair, Bnei Akiva, uh, Noah Oved, all these youth groups, right now, it's only youth instructing youth. And when I was out there in the mountains in the Galilee, I was responsible for the welfare of these kids, to feed them, to make sure they, they're not cold, to educate them. That's a huge responsibility at a very young age. So if you can do that at the age of 15, a startup is not a piece of cake, but you're well on your way. And the third component is the IDF. What's special about the IDF, it takes extraordinarily young people and gives them real-world responsibility at, very, at a very young age. And again, I'm not unusual in this sense that when I was 22 years old, I look back and I see 100 soldiers behind enemy lines. I'm responsible for coordinating with Air Force and with artillery and bringing them to the uh, um, mission and conducting and security and fighting and navigating. And again, later on when I was in, in my high-tech company, I, I literally remember coming to a big bank in uh, Delaware, Wilmington, Delaware, and my folks asked, you know, what if we lose this RFP, this big bid? I kept on thinking, well, we're not going to die, are we? And we lost. <laughs> so I think that the secret sauce is a culture of debate and providing young people at a very young age real tasks, not phony tasks, real tasks that make an impact, as Sir Ronald did, talked about, creating a real impact in the real world at a very young age. So wrapping it up, how do we develop kids today that are prepared for the future, get them debating all day, get them acting, providing them values that will be a source of strength and, and uh, an inner core that doesn't change regardless of the weird technologies that are going to hit us. 
give them the, some good math. That's pretty much the recipe. Today, Israel is second only to Silicon Valley. We've got a stronger high-tech market here today than Boston or Manhattan or Western Europe. Second only to Silicon Valley, and we ain't seen nothing yet. Toda Rabah, thank you very much.